great to be successful. I think New Zealand's learning to celebrate that success. Back yourself more, you have to make the decision to be a leader. You know, the day you commit to it and you want to take it on, you're held to a higher standard. Chris Quinn, Foodstuffs North Island CEO. So am I right in thinking you had experience when you were younger working in one of the stores? I'm sure I've seen that somewhere. So, uh, gosh, 30 years ago, university time, uh, my uncle and aunt owned the New World of Walkworth. Yep. My university job was driving the truck and filling the shelves and doing that stuff. So I studied uh, accounting and law at university and started in you know, about four years in accounting roles. Mainly smaller companies, a manufacturing company and a technology company. Uh, and then moved into telecom, that was a big part of my career, 24 years. Uh, but one thing I was quite deliberate about was moving around the business. So, accounting role to start, then sales management for about seven or eight years, mm -hmm. then service delivery, so running call centres and big operational sort of things. So, talking about, you know, you've had that experience, do you think retail then is very different from other industries in the sense of the work ethic and how they have to go about it? Yeah, look, it's, it's one of the, you know, genuinely few seven day a week, most hours of the day yep. roles. You know, if you look at a pack and save, they're never closed. So when they're not trading, they're filling the shelves at night and doing all these things. So they are quite a different business from that point of view. Uh, and then the multi-disciplines, you know, within our stores, because we've got a full butchery or butchers, a full bakery or bakers, you've almost got half a dozen little businesses making up the full offer to customers. So yeah. the range of skills and disciplines and experience and risks and things you have to manage is quite unique. Yeah. Did you always want to be a leader or a CEO? I don't think I ever said I want to be a CEO. And I think, I, I actually think that's the wrong driver. You've got to actually be in it for the reason that you want a team to succeed. So in the end, you know, I genuinely enjoy grabbing teams, fighting as a team, winning as a team and doing those things. If you aspire to some sort of leadership career, you do need to have an understanding of most parts of a business and how they operate. You know, I sort of think about it as, could I sit down next to anyone and engage in a reasonably intelligent conversation about the work they do? So for you, it's important to have learned the full scope of... Yeah, I, I do think that matters because you've got to have an appreciation of the value each piece adds. You've got to have an appreciation of the risks and challenges. Yeah. What for you is the vision of Foodstuffs? What is it that you're trying to do? So the purpose of Foodstuffs North Island is to make sure New Zealanders get more out of life. That fits for our customers, it fits for our team, fits for our supplier partners, fits for stakeholders, fits for New Zealanders. Mm -hmm. And if we have an aspiration, which is to be one of the most customer driven retailers in the world. Yep. So at the moment we're still halfway between promoting things that suppliers have encouraged us to promote commercially yep. versus what customers actually want on shelf at a great deal. And we've got to get to that customers want on shelf at a great deal and move the industry to that. How easy has it been to get everybody on board? I mean, you've got 22,000 people. <clears throat> yeah. Are they all on board with that vision? or? Look, it's, um, it's a co-op. Um, and and co-ops, the wonderful thing about co-ops is independence of thought. Uh, which I think actually in most modern organisations is what's going to happen anyway. You know, as we head into a millennial and younger majority workforce, you know, the old style of CEO sends an email and everybody follows, gone, you know. So, so this consultative engagement style uh, that, that is so necessary in a cooperative is actually what I believe most organisations will be doing anyway, to get true performance yeah. as you go forward. So, um, you know, in a co-op, the, the thing that works really well is um, getting the perfect balance between agility of decision making, mm -hmm. so sometimes leaders just have to make calls and have to be accountable for them, and depth of consultation, where you spend quite a bit of time pulling the group together, explaining where you're going, just, you know, from a customer point of view. How do you know the difference of when to make that decision and when to go and sit down uh, and discuss it? You develop a pretty good sense. Um, you listen and learn a lot. You know, I spend a lot of time in communication, in consultation, in conversation, um, much more than probably many other organisations. But when you get it to work, it's incredibly fast and effective. If you don't get it to work, it's messy. Um, and that's, that's the big thing to you learn. Work? <laughs> that's uh, the secret. Look, in the end, if everyone sees the same set of facts and all of the same information, you generally land in the same place. Most disagreements come because of gaps. I would completely agree with that. Yeah. So. For me, I would say that that comes down to communication. If everybody's aware of all the factors mm. that are affecting it, they're going to come to the same conclusions. Yeah. What would be the most challenging area? Oh, look, the challenging is you know independence versus best practice. Um, independence applied in the right way in the right place can be fantastic, and it makes our stores different and competitive. 
applied in the wrong way can make it slower, harder, painful to get things done. Mm -hmm. um, you've just got to lean into that challenge. So the time spent on change management, on engaging people in a direction is critical. Do you have an example of that that you could share? A classic example recently, we, it, it seems like a silly small thing, but we, we announced Bring Your Own Container as a sustainability initiative. Um, from a customer point of view, massively well received. Um, from a store point of view, they felt like they should have voted on it. What so would we you had have done a, differently? Uh, we would have slowed down at the beginning, got high engagement, got good, good follow through. The lesson for me on that one, should have spent more time up front. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a great question you keep thinking about when something goes wrong, which is what could I have done that would make a difference? Mm -hmm. And there's always an answer. Yep. Always. You know, there's never a situation in which you couldn't have made a difference. So, you know, and then you go, okay, so I'm part of it. Um, you know, and that, that's thinking about that is, as a leader is taking accountability. Is that something you ask yourself a lot? Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and I think particularly when you know, something's not performing the way you want it to perform. You know, the, the nicest place to go is to blame. You know, to go, right, well, that's that person's, you know, I may have to do something about that person. You've got to stand back and go, hang on, what was my role in getting it to there? Yep. You've got to remember that in every conversation you're having an impact, mm -hmm. it's hard, right? You know, because you turn up tired today, you turn up pissed off about something, and you've got to actually take that breath. You know, one of the conversations we keep trying to have is the model of above the line. Your, natural chemical reaction as a human to pressure to a threat to something going wrong is to go below the line, to get in there and duke it out. Yeah. Um, second reaction is breathe, go above the line and think about you know where are we trying to get to and how do I take each individual incident and move it forward. So it's learning to be really self-aware of your own emotional responses, yeah. take yeah. that moment to recompose yourself and then go back in to communicate yeah. with somebody on a level that's going to help them yeah. as opposed to it being about you. Yeah. One boss said to me, you know what, you're allowed to get angry three times a year, but don't use them all in December. Um, <laughs> And it's a little bit of a joke, but anger is an emotion, and it's okay to show your emotions. Yep. You know, it's okay. It's really important to show when you're excited. You know, when you're pleased, when you're wrapped, when you're, you know, when you've won. Because people that constantly are just laying in the work but not celebrating the success, you know, that's that's hard. Um, but it's also important to go. You know what? I'm really pissed off about that. You know, I'm, I'm disappointed for us and in us, and we could have been better. You know, and and then be part of fixing it. So the most important thing is don't, you know, you can't excuse yourself from that. But the first stage for you is to go, what was my part to play in this? Yep. Take responsibility yep. for anything you did and then to look for accountability to address the problem or the challenge that's yep. come up. I've never been in a position where I've felt I've acted too quick. I've only ever acted too slow. We mostly, when, when people performance is not where you want it to be, we sort of hope time will fix it. Yep. It never does. You know, coaching, helping to improve, performance lifting has to happen in the now. Yep. And it's really important not to avoid things that might be a little bit tough. Could you give an example of that? Just oh, you know, I think I had a long time ago when I was a different business, I had a business in Australia that wasn't going well. You figured it would, time might fix it. You know, you knew in your gut that leadership was part of the issue, mm -hmm. but you didn't act because, you know, you, you liked that person, you, you thought they would fix it. Yep. You know, and who knows, if, if intervention had occurred much earlier uh, and much more firmly, you might have turned a situation around, including the person. You know, and then it, it gets to a point where it's, you know, it's too big to, to fix. So the moment you know the truth, basically act on it. Yeah. You know, one of the fatal flaws of leadership is an inability to learn. You know, leaders who have already know it all and yeah. never got anything wrong, that's hopeless. You know, I think the ability to keep learning is critical yeah. um, and never stops. What are some of the things you've learned maybe in the last five years? One of my biggest challenges at the moment is carving out thinking time, carving out coaching time. You know, the, the realising the value I can add next is much more about coaching than doing mm -hmm. and growing people you've carefully selected because they're fantastic and have huge potential. So do you think it's the most important thing, this coaching and developing people? It's the core role of a leader. Making decisions, coaching and growing and improving people, um, creating clarity, creating action, it's what you're there to do.